everyone. Well, it was not a happy time for us when the travel lift lifted us out of the water just a few days into our planned four-week cruise. We thought we had taken care of all the pressing repairs and we could enjoy a little bit of time out on the water. That is, until Lee made an unpleasant discovery. We were staying at the El Mero docks, also known as the Almost Free docks. There is no electricity or water, but the price is right. 50 pesos are approximately $2.75 a night, and it's a great place for checking everything out before leaving the Waimas area. The downside is sometimes the smell comes over the hill from the fish processing plant and it's also a place I wouldn't swim in. On the close and muggy day following our first Chubasco, Lee was working on the connection for the SSB tuner deep down in the lazarette. He glanced to his left and was curious about the rust on the wet exhaust through hull. He decided to take a brass wire brush to the rust and discovered a crack. Although the through hull is above the water line, if the crack had given way, we would have been pumping water into the boat any time we ran the engine. It felt like a ticking time bomb and we elected to return to the yard. As it turns out, the fitting is not available here and has to be ordered. When Lee removed the fitting, it came apart and he said it was amazing that it wasn't already leaking. But because the crack was on the top and the through hull isn't under a great deal of pressure, we detected no leaking. In the wake of our early return to the yard, we decided to get a quick start on our projects. However, with rust on our minds, we decided to pull the worst looking of the chain plates. When we bought the boat, there was very little evidence of any rust. The chain plates must have received a very thorough cleaning before we looked at her, as we find it hard to believe all this corrosion could have occurred in the 11 months we have owned her. We pulled the chain plates by first tensioning the running backstays and then releasing tension on the lower shrouds. We each took a side to make the job go faster. The deck cover plate was removed and this one had obviously been leaking. The previous owners tried using silicone to seal it, but to no avail as it still continued to leak. Of course, the contents of the lockers, in this case our games locker, had to be removed. We loosened the nuts on the backing plates and backed out the bolts. This plate on the starboard side came out quite easily, while the port side took more persuading. Both sides leaked during rainfall. Once again, Bob Perry was invaluable in advising us. Lee emailed him regarding metal choice for the chain plates and within five minutes he had responded advising the use of 316 stainless. We have ordered the stainless stock from the U.S. and will take it to Luis Hernandez here in Waimas to be drilled and shaped. One of the projects I wanted to accomplish was to pull the teak decks. I began by removing some hardware on the foredeck. After removing the hose pipe, I was amazed at the thickness of the teak. It wasn't at all like the thin stuff I have seen in some YouTube videos. 
and it gave me pause. This was Major Teak. Bob Perry advised against removing the teak and noted the teak was thick and traditionally laid with a lap at each edge. We have had no leaks with the teak, well, other than at the chain plates, but it does need to be recocked and a few plugs put in over screws that were left exposed by the previous owner. So, a change in plans and an order for a case of teak caulking was placed with Jamestown distributors. Friends would look askance when we mentioned we hadn't been using our stove because we hadn't checked out the propane system. We enjoy eating salads and we would use a propane bottle with the barbecue if we wanted meat. It wasn't a priority for us. That changed, though, when we ran out of pods for our Nespresso maker. Lee got down to business with the gas sensor he purchased on Amazon. Rather than use soapy water to test every inch of propane line, Lee ran the sensor over the propane line, tracing it from the galley back to the tanks. And I will do the same thing. I will follow to make sure line. the sensor was functioning, he tested it using the valve to the barbecue. I am pleased to report our propane system is now in use for morning coffee. A lot of projects are underway while we try to cope with the heat. This weekend, we travel to Phoenix to meet our friends Steve and Terry as they visit their daughter and her family. Steve and Terry are also bringing our marine supply orders, and we will return to La Brisa on Monday armed with supplies to swing into action. I will share more of what we are up to in the next video. Until then!